guys, it's Danny. Today we are going to work with some terrestrial orchids and I have three species here. One of them is brand new. I've been sent a brand new orchid species, which is very, very exciting. So today we are going to pot all three of them. I am going to go for a mixture that I did not actually try until now with my terrestrial orchids. But seeing how my Cymbidium is doing, and PS, he's doing great in that peat mixture. Well, you know what? Today we are going to go for something very similar to what this Ludicia is potted in, even more airy than this. So without further ado, let's start. I want to start with the Spathoglottis though, because I want to see how those pseudobulbs fared last year. This is an orchid which has underground pseudobulbs. I had it for a year already, it bloomed. I'm not sure exactly if the culture was optimum since it's a very new orchid for me, but I can definitely tell you that keeping it hydrated was not an easy task. Since it's a terrestrial orchid, it does prefer more moisture than epiphytic orchids. And this mixture that I made here, it dried out way, way too fast. So let's first unpot the spatoglottis and see how the bulbs have fared. Alrighty, so right now this orchid is actually dormant. I should find some roundish bulbs that look a little bit like UFOs, to be honest. I'll link you down below to the first video in which we potted this orchid, just so you see how it used to be. Now, if I did a good job with this orchid, I'll find more bulbs, but if I didn't do such a good job, I will find less. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, we'll see. So, ooh, here we have one bulb. Oh, I thought this was a growth, but it's actually a little bit of algae. So we have one bulb, which is good, but we started out with three. So let's see how many we actually have. By the way, all of these roots, they're completely gone. So it's perfectly fine for me to just pull away at these bulbs and completely remove the roots, cleaning them up very, very well. So here we have one bulb. See, I told you it looks a little bit like a UFO. And this one actually looks a little bit like a heart. How sweet. Or actually, now that I look at it, maybe a cat face. Very interesting. So we have one. Oh, look at this. We have a tiny one. This didn't used to exist. And it's so tiny. I'm gonna let it be. I'm gonna pot it. But this has been produced this year. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be that tiny though. I can see one of the pseudobulbs has rotted away and this is one of the original bulbs, I think. So one didn't actually make it for reasons unknown, could be my culture, could be the fact that the bulb simply wasn't very strong because this bulb, which was the biggest bulb, this one created a second bulb right here. Can you see it? And I actually will separate it. And if my memory serves me right, this was the original bulb. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do is cut away all of these roots, clean them up a little bit, remove the stems because they're completely dry as well. See, so it's perfectly fine to cut them. And I'll come back with the cleaned bulbs. Alrighty, so we are back. Does this look funny to you, Joey? She's in a mood right now. She's doing some flying around and when she lands, she laughs. So. Overall, let's try to get through this video, girls. I don't think I did a splendid job. <laughs> Stop making me feel worse. But it could have been... Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, we'll take a break for the girls to fly around and stretch their wings because it's not going well. Alrighty, where were we? So I don't think I did a severely poor job, but I'm not sure if I did a very good job. I don't know what I'm expecting. 10 more bulbs, maybe, I don't know, bigger bulbs. I don't have much experience and I cannot really find a lot of information on the internet, but let's presume that I didn't do such a good job. I do want to switch it up a little bit. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna go for a much more watch retentive medium since I had issues with watering and that of course can affect the overall performance of the orchid. So we're gonna go for some peat based soil combined with a lot of perlite and some vermiculite. This is actually my African violet mix, which you might already know. Side note, the vermiculite, I ordered it to try it because it's not available locally here. And I have to say, I can do without. It's not something that I really, really need. Perlite though is a very, very good addition for airiness. So as you can see, my mixture has a lot of perlite because even though this orchid is terrestrial, it still needs its aeration. Fluffy soils are always easier on the roots, so I will opt for that soil combined with 
just a proper pot. No ventilation holes. It's not transparent. I don't need to see the roots. They're not really telling me much, to be fully honest. They look a lot like terrestrial plant roots. So we're not gonna see the fresh new tips growing or things of the sorts. So with that said, let's just pot them up. Another benefit of this mixture is that it does have some fertilizer. And as far as I read, this orchid does enjoy its fertilizer. So maybe, again, one of the things that didn't make it perform like I thought it would was the lack of fertilizer. I did fertilize it at the same rate as all of my other epiphytic orchids, and maybe that's just not enough. Considering there is quite a lot of growth to be done in one season, Maybe I should have used more fertilizer. So this will help me out a little bit since the soil is pre-fertilized a little bit. I will still continue to use my orchid fertilizer, but you get the idea. I think this will help me out in the nutrient department as well. So just like last year, I will pot them with where the roots are downwards. And it's easy to see with these orchids where they have that little wick, that's the top, and where they have the little broom formation, that's the bottom. I will put these bulbs back and hopefully next year we will find more bulbs. I'm also gonna add this little tiny guy, which I think just separated from one of the bulbs, but hey, maybe it grows. And I'm just gonna top it up with some more mix. I think overall I'll have about four centimeters of medium on top of them. That would be about an inch and a half. And voila, we are all done. Now I'm not going to water it very much. This medium is already slightly damp and I think for now it's enough because the bulbs are still dormant. I think it's gonna take a while until they produce roots. So if I'm gonna water, I might just spray a little bit the top or just pour a little bit of water. I'm not gonna soak this pot. It's super, super light. This being done, I think it's time to head on to our next orchid, which is the Lodicea. All right, next up, the Lodicea this color. This is not the older one that I had. I gave that one away because I had too many. I had the red variety and the white variety. Well, as you might already know, I lost the cutting of the white variety. I still have the red one. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna try with the normal Lodicea once again since it was available in stores. So this is a new one. It's not my older one. And if you remember, I used to grow that one in a self-watering pot, which was not very wide, but it was tall. And I was thinking it will do a nice little number of becoming pendant, which it did, but it didn't look so good. <laughs> and it wasn't functional either because these rhizomes actually root themselves again in the medium. So in the end, what happened was on top, they lost their leaves and at the bottom, they didn't root into anything. So I had some bare stems at the top with new growth, but at the bottom, some hanging stems, which did not look like they belong. You get what I'm saying? It wasn't okay. So I will go ahead and try a shallow pot, but a wider pot, because I saw a video recently from Summer Rain Oaks. She was interviewing a houseplant grower, which had a Lodicea in one of these types of pots. It was a big specimen. It looked wonderful. So I'll try to find that video and link it down below. I got really inspired. I decided that, yeah, that's what I wanna do. Hence the wider pot. So with the Lodicea, again, I will use the very same mixture. I have my Lodicea's in Bark and Sphagnum Moss and they're doing absolutely fine. The problem is watering once again. And as you can see, this particular one is already potted in a sort of peat type mixture and everything is okay. But I will try to remove as much of that medium as I possibly can. So let's go ahead and do that really, really fast just to show you how the roots look like as well. Oh, we don't have a lot of roots on this one. And yes, we have multiple stems just potted together here, which is not surprising, but look how many new growths on the way. Did this one break from anywhere? It doesn't look like it. It just looks like another stem plucked in there with everybody else. It's okay, all of these stems will catch, everybody will be okay. But yeah, this is how it looks like on the inside when the stem is growing. All of these will become new growths. I was hoping to show you some roots as well, but apparently this orchid is not super, super rooty. The roots look like Paphiopetalum roots. They're a little fuzzy, a little brown. Oh wow. It just looks like this is a bunch of stems just potted together. This one is not even attached to anything. I'm gonna let them be like this because they had a nice shape. But yeah, I think this orchid was just a bunch of stems potted together to look more fluffy. So this one will be easy because we don't have all that many roots. See, oh, we see the silver lining.
Let us lighten up the mood with my little Maya here, which I like to call the little pachyderm. And before you start to type, do you even know what a pachyderm is? I know, Maya poops like one. And I thought about describing this poop situation through other animals, but calling her my little bovine didn't have the same ring to it, right? So she's my little pachyderm. You're the little feathered pachyderm. Maya started to fly so well. She was the one who actually didn't know how to fly and now she's all over the greenhouse. Yes, you are. And you poop all over my plants. Oh, I'm sorry. You fertilize them. Good bird. And lastly, an orchid I've never worked with before. This is a Calanthe orchid. It was sent by my viewer Bruno together with a picture of how it's supposed to look like. And I am so happy, so, so happy. Thank you so, so much Bruno for thinking of me. I hope I will do a good job with this one. I did my research and apparently this is the type of Calanthe which produces pseudobulbs and is deciduous. And with this one, what happens is that every year the older pseudobulb is actually lost, the roots are lost, and the pseudobulb will grow another growth, which I can already see sprouting right here. So as you can see on my orchid, this pseudobulb is already super, super shriveled. There are no good roots. All of these are dry, but that is perfectly normal. So the first thing that I will do is actually remove the old pseudobulb. As per culture guides, this is what we're supposed to do because during this year, this pseudobulb will just rot. So two-year-old pseudobulbs are not going to make it on the plant. So, well, that was actually easy. I want to be very, very careful with this new growth here. And what I will do is actually wet a little bit this sphagnum moss to be easier to remove it. There are no live roots, so it's perfectly fine if I just wet the area. Well, I got a little ahead of myself and I forgot to press record. So I'm going to use again an opaque pot with this one. Just like catacetum type orchids, these orchids, which tend to be deciduous and lose all of their leaves within a year and grow a mature growth within a year, they typically need more fertilizer than your average Cattleya or Phalaenopsis orchid. So again, I'm hoping that this medium will help out. Honey, you wanna come closer? Recently, Maya is very curious about what I'm doing and she always wants to be closer to me. Now, if you can promise not to poop on my shoulder, I miss holding a bird on my shoulder. These guys are not like Bindi, they're not parrots. They're independent little birds. Oh, I was saying that this medium might help out a little bit with fertilizing. I also ordered some slow release fertilizer that I can add afterwards. So what I'm gonna do with this is just stick it like this inside the medium. I'm going to try not to completely cover this growth and I'm not going to water it. Again, just like with catacetums, when the growth is already pretty tall and it produces roots, that's when we can start to water. Before that, there is no need and there is a chance the base of the pseudobulb will be affected by all of that moisture. Alrighty, so let's pull everybody in the frame and do the outro. Ta-da, everybody's potted up now. All we need is some good luck and hopefully we did a good job. Now, before I let you go, I wanna leave you with an idea. You can grow orchids in a million different ways. Sure, there are some things that are tested, they're known to work, but the thing is they're not all comfortable for everybody. Hence why so many different growers have different setups, different media that they prefer and so on and so forth. And I always get so many questions asking me, will this medium work? Is this good? Is charcoal good for orchids? And the answer is to most of those questions, yes, it is. All of these media are good because in the end, all orchids want three things from their setup or medium. One, they want to be able to have some water. So your setup and medium needs to provide water and of course nutrients through that water. Two, they like air. So the medium and setup you're gonna choose needs to provide proper aeration. Of course, with terrestrial orchids, that ratio will be slightly different than with epiphytic orchids. Hence why the different mediums sometimes, it all has to do with the quantity of air, but all orchids want air around their root system. And three, they want a medium which will not damage their roots chemically and physically wise. We don't want a medium that will leach out certain stuff which roots won't appreciate. We don't want a medium which will poke the roots or be very abrasive, which can damage the root tips. Other than that, 
The sky's the limit, you guys. And all of the setups are okay if you are okay working with them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed potting the terrestrial orchids. I'll keep you up to date. Feel free to subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, always new stuff happening. And if you're into shorter videos, I'm actually starting to post shorter versions of my tutorials on my socials. So do check those out as well. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye.